This Mac R, which is currently on the workbench, was inspired by this photo. And zooming in just a little bit closer at the stack area, there doesn't appear to be any connection between the top of the muffler or the stack itself to the cab. Which is different from the way AMT's instruction sheets show it. Whether it's the option with a separate stack brace, part number 203 here, or the version that has a bracket molded on to one half of the muffler assembly, as illustrated here. My best guess for what's fitted to the truck being modeled is an exhaust bracket similar to the one on the right side of this truck, which is a standalone assembly made primarily of square tube and bolted to the frame while remaining totally separate from the cab. Using the photos I had as a general guide, I built a reasonable approximation of the truck's exhaust system using a combination of kit parts and some simple scratch building. Here are the completed parts. We'll take a look at them one by one. Starting with the exhaust bracket itself, which is made from Evergreen 1.8 styrene tube, which appeared to be the closest match to the prototype size. Bend locations were marked with pencil and notched with a triangular file, cutting through three sides, but leaving the fourth side intact for now so that the bend could be checked and adjustments made as required. Once everything was correct, the part was separated into three sections. and test fitted into the finished shape. One sixteenth brass rod was bent to the matching angles and two pieces were cut which were fitted inside the tube at final assembly to add extra strength. Assemble with a gap filling CA glue and clamp everything to a flat surface while it dries. A small piece of glass as shown here works very well because any excess glue won't stick to the surface, making it easy to remove the part after it's assembled. Putty any seams as required, and do some final sanding to round off the corners. Ends will be trimmed to final length later in the process, during test fitting of the muffler. I used a Transtar 4300 kit muffler because I had one available. You can also scratch build a muffler from styrene tube very easily. The chrome was removed, and because the stack will be replaced with aluminum tube, the molded on stack halves were also removed. After assembly of the muffler halves, any additional holes were plugged, such as the one on the top right of this image, which is originally a recess where the molded in mounting pin on the Transtar 4300 cab was supposed to be glued in place. I decided to remove the molded on muffler clamp detail as well, and both ends of the muffler were drilled to take a 3 16th piece of aluminum tube. I like to use a single piece of tube running all the way through the muffler rather than trying to align top and bottom pieces. 3 16th tube will fit nicely over the kit exhaust pipe I'll be using and to simulate a band clamp on the bottom end of the pipe I cut a piece of 40 thou by 40 thou styrene strip at 1 60 thou long which works out to 4 scale inches and glued it in place. Then, styrene rivet head castings were added to one side and bolt head castings to the other to simulate the fasteners holding the clamp together. Kit exhaust pipe halves were assembled and filled and sanded as required to fit nicely inside the 3 16th aluminum tube. Adding and gluing the muffler in place completes this part of the subassembly. The heat shield part included in one of AMT's exhaust stack options is the correct configuration, wrapping only part way around the pipe, but is of course molded solid and is much shorter than the Transtar 4300 muffler. I had etched brass mesh on hand and it was easy to cut a piece which would wrap around the stack to form the heat shield. but that still left the non-perforated areas around the top and sides. 
What it chose to do is cut thin strips of 5,000 shim brass and solder these in place. Brass shim this thin can be cut easily with a hobby knife and a straight edge. And the pieces were then tinned on one side, which is a process of applying a thin layer of solder, leaving the parts of the solder coating on one side as shown here. Holding parts in place is usually the biggest challenge when soldering, and I've had good success using an assortment of magnets combined with steel items, such as this exacto triangular square and small machinist square, to hold parts in place. The narrow strip visible has been soldered in place. It was set on top of the mesh with the tin side down, and as the soldering gun was drawn along the top surface, the pre-applied solder melted, flowed, and bonded between the mesh and the brass strip. The small amount of solder that was deposited along the top of the strip during the soldering operation can be cleaned up later. Both narrow strips have been added. Excess solder has been cleaned up. And with the addition of the top and bottom pieces and cleanup of any excess solder, the heat shield is now complete and ready to be formed into a half round shape to fit over the muffler. I used an X-Acto knife blade handle as a form and it was easy to roll the half round shape because even though it's two layers soldered together, the heat shield is only 13 thou in total thickness, 5 thousandths of an inch for the shim brass and 8 thousandths of an inch for the original mesh. A last detail for the heat shield is a bolt head casting at each corner simulating the fasteners which will hold it in place to the muffler. A band clamp was also modeled for the top of the exhaust stack, and this started out as a piece of 732 seconds tube, which is the size which will slide over top of the 316 stack tube, cut 160 thou long to simulate a 4 inch long band clamp in 125th scale. 40 thou square styrene strip was glued in place, and rivet and bolt head castings were added to complete the band clamp. These clamps are easy to make, and just like on the real trucks, greatly simplify assembly of exhaust components. The most challenging part of this project was the rain cap, which starts with a piece of 732nd brass tube, cut 40 thou long, to make the ring see that left side of the picture. This simulates the clamp ring which holds the rain cap assembly on top of a real stack. The cap itself is punched from brass sheet, 10 thou thick, using a quarter inch paper punch and the counterweight on the right side is cut and filed from more of the same 10 thou brass sheet. The two pieces of 10 thou by 40 thou styrene strip will be glued on later to complete the assembly. Tin both the ring and one side of the cap before assembly, then hold them in place with tweezers and apply heat with a soldering gun to securely attach the cap to the ring. Next, Hold the completed cap and ring assembly down with a magnet and then carefully attach the counterweight as shown here. Tin both of the surfaces to be joined, hold in place and apply heat with a soldering gun. Here's the completed stack and counterweight assembly, just needing a small amount of cleanup. And the completed rain cap assembly with the styrene strips glued in place and bolt head and rivet head details added to simulate fasteners. Using the frame rail height and the length of muffler as a guide, both ends of the bent tube were cut to length and the top was capped with a piece of styrene strip. The assembly itself was attached to the frame on a piece of 30 thou by 250 wide styrene strip to simulate the mounting plate and a pair of 30 thou pins were added in locations that corresponded to the molded in bands on the muffler. To represent attachment points where the muffler would attach to the stack bracket on a real truck, short pieces of 1 8 styrene angle were cut using a miter box for consistency. One leg of the angle was trimmed shorter and to keep this length consistent, a spacer was held in place using magnets and the excess length is trimmed off using a chisel blade and a hobby knife.
These pieces were glued in place with a longer leg attached to the stock bracket and bolt head castings were added to simulate fasteners. Stack bracket in place on the truck, ready to receive the completed subassembly of muffler, stack, and rain cap. And with the stack set in place. These pieces are all attached temporarily for the photo, of course, and will be taken apart for final finishing later. And looking down from the top. If compared to the actual prototype truck, if it were possible to do so, there are some minor inconsistencies, but overall, the appearance of the single stack on the Mac has been replicated, and I'm fairly happy with the results. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of this little project. Although this particular model is a single stack Mac, the techniques applied here can be used for a wide range of projects, and hopefully you found something useful that you can apply to one of your model projects in the future.